I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servant or his female servant or his ox or his donkey or anything that is your neighbor's. My name is Melody Sullivan, and I've been attending church here with my husband and my three kids for about eight years. Um, I'm a part of the women's ministry team, and then for my job, I am a social media coordinator and podcast editor. And so I work a lot in social media, and that does tie into this commandment because I feel like in that world, there is so much opportunity to be drawn into coveting or jealousy or comparison. My understanding of this commandment is that God desires for our hearts to be content in Him. Um, And it really does tie back to the first commandment of not having other gods before Him. He wants our hearts fully for Him. And when we long for other things, we covet them or we feel jealous or comparison, jealousy or comparison, um, we're putting other things in His place. And so God doesn't want that for us. He wants our contentment in Him alone. The commandment to not covet is one that I find myself constantly struggling with. It's something that pops up daily um, as a wife, as a mom, as just someone in today's world who has a seemingly endless window into other people's lives. And I can see what people are doing, what people have, and it's so easy to be tempted to think that I deserve those things, that my life should look the same. Um, And so it's a daily struggle to not covet something that someone else has or is doing. And so I feel that tension on a regular basis. Um, As a woman, as someone who's been called to be a wife and a mother, I have let comparison and jealousy steal so much joy and identity um, from what God has called me to do because I can see what other moms are doing, I can see what other women are doing, and think that what I'm doing isn't enough because I can't be a full-time mom, a full-time worker, you know, I have to kind of piece things together, and so I let that steal joy, and I let that take away my identity. I put my identity in what I'm doing rather than in what who I am and what God has called me to be. I think a lot of it came to the surface in, like over the pandemic when I was just home with my kids, and then on top of everything else I was doing, I was also their teacher um, and their like events coordinator, all of the events at home, I, entertainment coordinator, I guess, and so. I think that the pandemic was really heavy on my heart, and so coming out of that was probably the time when I got serious about saying, you know, my focus is too inward on what I have or don't have, and then too outward on what everybody else has or doesn't have. Just over time and interacting differently on social media, especially right now my job is working for a ministry on social media, and so I get the opportunity to talk to people and specifically sharing the word. And it has given me a different um, viewpoint of social media. And God has really just laid on my heart his word and what he is calling me to do. And he's kind of molded those two things of like his word and this thing that was a temptation, social media, to be a good vehicle and to use it in a healthy way. Um, And I would say that he has also redeemed me through a specific verse, which is Psalm 116, 7, and it says, um, return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. And just coming back to that verse over and over when those thoughts of temptation or those thoughts of covetousness or jealousy pop into my head, returning to the fact that God has been good to me, he's called me to something good, he can restore even things that were temptations or vehicles for temptation in this way of allowing me a job and um, also still being able to be a wife and a mom and those things. Keeping this commandment now is helpful just for the peace of my own heart, which then is also the peace within my family and the peace within our communities. And keeping the commandment leads to contentment. And so that is something that we all need. I need contentment in my own life. Our family needs contentment. Our church needs contentment and unity. And I think we could all agree that that's what our world needs. We feel so much tension and disunity and arguing and disagreements and A lot of that is because our focus is on what other people are doing or saying or have, and keeping this commandment just brings contentment and peace. I would say to encourage someone who is struggling with this commandment or coveting or jealousy in particular is to take a step back and to remember the goodness of God because it's there for all of us. And if you need to remove yourself from a situation or a relationship for a little bit or just change the way it looks, 
that's okay because it's most important for you to be right and content with God. Um, and then he blesses us with those genuine and humble relationships and fellowship with other people once we're in a good spot with him.